Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, I wanted to go over the top five reasons to ride a fat bike and why they are a viable option year round. I have thousands of miles on my fat bikes in year round riding and I have four of them in my garage right now. So while a fat bike may not be the best option for all types of ridings, things such as long distance pavement riding, I have certainly found they are not the gimmick I once thought they were or just a snow only bike as many people use them. In my opinion, they have a lot more to offer as a staple and a primary bike uh, in your garage. I'm gonna do this as a rolling list, so I'm gonna feature each one of my bikes in action as I give you the top five. So let's get into item number one, which is value. So in this segment, I'm riding my 2014 Surly Pugsley. I believe that a fat bike offers some of the best cycling value of any bike you can buy. You can find solid spec models new in a wide variety of price points and option ranges, and used bikes can be an even better option. I found this Pugsley, which is my first fat bike over four years ago. It's a quality steel frame from Surly, and I paid about $640 for it. Now the current market is much different, but you can still find quality bikes, new and used, with solid build specs that will deliver good performance and longevity for reasonable amounts of money. Used options are often in fantastic condition too, as many people will only ride them periodically in the snow, which is not particularly hard on the bike itself, as long as rust has not been an issue. So again, in my experience, the value proposition for a fat bike is one of the best in the bike industry. So let's move on to item number two on my list, which is simplicity and durability. So I'm currently on a 2014 Surly Pugs Ops which is a great representation uh, for this segment. Fat bikes are typically very well built to handle the large tires. They often have a fully rigid design, meaning no suspension, which also means that fat bikes are easy to maintain. And even those riders at the beginner end of the spectrum can maintain a fat bike easily. Because most fat bikes are designed to be used in rougher, more adventure oriented terrain, they typically have a solid geometry that is easy to adapt to for most riders. The larger tires are also very comfortable and with proper air pressure, the tire volume actually acts as a bit of suspension. Even my full suspension mountain bike with quality Fox shocks does not have the smooth ride of my fat bikes. And another major benefit to the tire size and volume is that it lends to being very stable, which is great for newer riders riding off pavement for the first time. So to summarize, a rigid fat bike is about as easy to maintain as a bike gets and is a great option uh, for everyone, especially those at the newer end of the spectrum. Now up to number three on my list, which is versatility. In this segment, I am on my 2021 Salsa Bear Grease Carbon. So the bike industry is renowned for niching down and creating incremental variations in categories, which can be confusing for the novice but ultimately leads to more options and finding a bike that can be targeted uh, specifically for your needs. Fat bikes are no different and are available for the budget minded to the ultra high end and at all slots in between. So unlike the prior two steel frame Surleys I was riding, this Salsa Bear Grease is a high quality carbon frame. As mentioned earlier, they often are fully rigid of course, but also front suspension options exist and there are even some full suspension versions out there if that is something you wanted or needed. A unique benefit is the ability to change wheel and tire size to drastically change the capability and characteristics of the bike. I did recently do a video specifically talking about variations and differences in wheel and tire size and how they impact performance. Uh, so I'll link that video down in the description below. So you can't take a non-fat mountain bike and upsize it enough to make it a viable fat bike but you can take many fat bikes and downsize them to be viable mountain bikes and adventure bikes just by changing the wheels and or tires. This Salsa Bear Grease is promoted as being for groomed racing, so you can build it for ultra lightweight for racing, but also many fat bikes such as this very same Salsa can serve as great bike packing and adventure rigs, as they often have a huge number of mounting options, good frame clearance for bags, and can carry a load with more stability than most other bikes albeit with some loss in efficiency. And last, and something that I think a lot of people never consider, because fat bikes and the wheels and tires are heavier, from a fitness standpoint, I find that I can get a more intense workout in a shorter period of time on my fat bikes, if that is what I wanna do. So again, with my fat bikes, I have found that the options to use them as you desire are endless and they are highly versatile. So the fourth item on the list is capability. And for this segment, I'll be riding my 2020 Surly ice cream truck. So fat bikes are highly capable in varied terrain. Obviously in snowy winter conditions, fat bikes are about the only option to have for good performance and not tear up the trails. 
As I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, I once thought they were just kind of a gimmick, but after actually riding one, I realized that they can do quite amazing things in those snowy conditions, and they also work really well in softer sand too, if you live on a shoreline. As I have found in my own experience and have demonstrated in some of my prior videos, they also excel in rugged, mountainous terrain and offer traction and comfort to rival some full suspension bikes without the setup complexity, cost, and maintenance of suspension. Even most beginners can understand and utilize the concept of adjusting tire pressure to change the performance and feel of the bike. Many fat bikes can be very capable as a trail bike as well, especially with the addition of a dropper seat post and adjusting wheel and tire size combinations as mentioned earlier. So in my experience, a fat bike is definitely the most capable four season bike uh, you can buy and ride. So now to item number five on the list and probably the most important, that's just fun. So while this is somewhat subjective, it's really hard to not have a smile on your face and be having fun when you're riding a fat bike. It's probably the one single thing that has drawn me to fat biking and riding them more than any of my other bikes uh, is the fun factor. And at least for me, just being on a fat bike brings about a more fun and casual mindset, which is not always the case when I'm on one of my mountain bikes or one of my gravel road type bikes. And what I mean by that is when I'm on my fat bike and if another cyclist is passing me on the trail, it's almost always with a smile or a wave or a nod or something like that. And the same goes when I'm passing other people on their mountain bike or gravel bike on the trail, which believe it or not does happen. It seems like they pretty much always think it's hilarious that I'm passing them on a fat bike. And when I'm out riding the fat bikes, one of the things that almost every day happens is that kids, uh, non-fat bike people uh, will often, you know, smile, wave, or even if the opportunity exists, stop and ask questions about the bike. Again, I never really had this happen when I'm on any of my other uh, types of bikes. And because you don't encounter other fat bikes on the trail all that often, when you do see someone else on a fat bike, you definitely feel a sense of camaraderie with them and that they kind of get the same things you're feeling as well. And I've had many people stop me in the parking lot or at the trailhead uh, and tell me that they have a fat bike and ask me questions about my bike or tell me about theirs. So again, not really something that happens very often on any of my other bikes. So to summarize, these are the key elements of why you should consider riding a fat bike and riding it more than just a few times a year in the snow, but riding it year round. So I hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you have any comments, questions, or things to add to my list from your own experience, please drop those down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and are enjoying the content I've been bringing you, please share and like, and please subscribe to this channel. It really does help out the channel if you want to continue to follow in my fat bike adventures and follow along with all that I have on this summer's agenda. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.